All right, guys, we are on our literature interactive theme number two. So yesterday you guys focused on inferencing. Today we're going to be focusing on theme. Um, what is theme? Theme is a topic that is so, so difficult to teach because it is something that can change based on the reader's perspective. It can change based on... Um, past experiences of the readers. There's a lot of information that plays into theme, but it is a very important topic that readers need to know about and they need to know how to identify what the theme of a text is. So real quickly, I'm just going to go over here and I know I've given you guys this information before, but when you look at the word, the, look at the word theme, a quick way I like to identify it is the theme is just the message that the author is trying to tell us in the story. So I like to take the word theme, I like to add the word message to it, and I like to out or outline and identify where it says message. So we have the message. Theme is just the message of the story. What is it that the author wants us to know and they want us to understand the whole point and content and ideas that the author is trying to portray to us readers. So knowing that the theme is the message of the story, I have a video that we're going to watch and then I'm going to have us go over and look at the assignment. So here is my video. It's from Schmoop. I love videos from Schmoop. Here we go. We speak Themes. Allah Ride a roller coaster that explores the loss of the innocent, or take a terrifying ride up the Tower of Cultural Diversity, or maybe even go for a spin in the teacups of separation and laws. Yeah, so maybe themes are better suited to stories and essays than amusement park rides. At least you don't have to be a certain height to read a book. Usually, a theme is quite simply the central idea explored in any piece of writing. You need a theme. Otherwise, what's the purpose of writing anything at all? You'd just be left with a story that meanders between completely unrelated characters or plot points, or a paper that ambles from one disjointed argument to another. Your teachers have read stuff like that, and uh, trust us, they're not super fans. I wish I could give it a G. Okay, so that definition of the word is a fairly broad one. We can narrow our focus a bit by concentrating on universal themes. A universal theme is one that pops up so often in many different books that it must be a concept that people are wrestling with in some way. Good versus evil and coming of age are two universal themes, for example. The theme of carrots being difficult to eat, well, that one doesn't get a lot of play. At least, not among people like me. In fact, we're pretty sure you're the only one who's having that problem. Not universal. society and individual versus self. Individual versus society comes up whenever there's a struggle between what an individual wants and what society demands of him. Like, if someone is passionately opposed to wearing pants in public, Loud individual versus self involves a similar struggle, but one that is taking place within the individual. I'm at the end of my rope with you. There probably isn't a character with any self-imposed pant-wearing laws, but Say there's a character who had dreams of moving to the big city to try to become a professional triangle player. Someday. But she's not sure they can bear to leave their small town behind. I just don't understand you and your fancy triangle playing. No one is forcing them to do one thing or the other. Society's demands have nothing to do with it. It's completely a personal decision. And all of the turmoil comes from within. These are just a couple of examples. As long as you can find a few million people concerned about a given topic, well then, my friend, you've got yourself a universal theme. We hate carrots. We hate carrots. And good luck with that carrot thing. Uh, it's going to be rough. Howdy da. All right, so that's just a quick video on theme and what the message of the story needs to, or what the message of the story is that the author is trying to portray to the readers. So I'm going to have us read this passage together. I'm going to kind of explain this as we go because it is pretty challenging, this topic. So I'm going to read this passage and we're going to discuss the questions. 
Okay, Miss, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Potts. Everyone in the apartment building knew that Mr. Jones and Mrs. Potts couldn't stand each other. They had both lived at 413 Apple Street for more than 50 years. They were next-door neighbors, but never spoke after a fight over a borrowed soup spoon that was never returned. As they got older, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Potts still didn't speak. Mr. Jones could not see very well in his older years and relied on his grandson, George, to come escort him to the grocery every store every week. Even though the store was only a few blocks away, Mr. Jones could not do it alone. Next door, Mrs. Potts found that she couldn't hear as well as she could when she was younger. She especially couldn't hear when she was on the phone or relied on her great niece, Julie, to make important phone calls to her doctor for her. One day, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Mrs. Potts found themselves in trouble. Construction on their building made it impossible for George and Julie to visit that day. And Mr. Jones needed to go to the grocery store, while Mrs. Potts needed to have a few important doctor calls made. In their distress, Mr. Jones found himself knocking at Mrs. Potts' door with a deal and a temporary truce. If Mrs. Potts could escort him to the grocery store, he would help Mrs. Potts with her doctor calls. It seemed to be a match made in heaven, and they both forgot about that borrowed soup spoon for the day. Okay, now what I want you to do is to determine a possible, determine a possible theme for the text. What is the message that the author is trying to tell us in this story? Okay, what is the theme? Down below, write two to three details from the text to support the theme you wrote. So if the theme that you wrote is, you know, this is just an example, okay? If the theme you wrote is um, dogs are man's best friends, then two to three details you would look for is how a dog would be supporting to its owner, okay? That's just an example because I didn't want to give you the answer here, okay? You're going to want to write two or three examples that support it. Make sure you're writing these answers in complete sentences. I will return it back to you and make you redo it until it's complete sentences. Down here for the reflecting and writing, it's the same questions as last time. What skill did you learn from this activity? Summarize the skill in your own words. So tell me what that skill means in your own words. How did this text help you understand the skill? And how will you use what you've learned to practice? Hmm. Practice this skill in the future. Okay, I want you to write your answers to these questions. When you're done, turn it back into me. I will review it. This is not an easy concept. It's pretty difficult. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out.